this stuff is way more complicated than usually anyone is telling you. And we want to break down some of it in a digestible way, but also in a way that gives you the power of all the information that you might need to advocate for yourself and get the care that you deserve. So just like our prolapse video that we've done, kind of breaking down and explaining the different types of prolapse for you, we're going to try to do that today with the different types of incontinence. We're not going to do a deep dive. We don't claim to be urologist or urogynecologist. Just trying to take some of this information and break it down in a way that makes sense. And we're going to start with just general bladder function and what the norms are there. <laughs> so the pee is made up in your kidneys, which are actually near your back, way up near the back of your rib cage, believe it or not. And then the pee goes through little tubes called ureters all the way down to your bladder. And as your bladder fills, let's see, let's give you some perspective yeah. of a visual. Now this view is like cut you in half and look at it from the side at the center of your body. You've probably seen this before. It's one of our favorite pictures. Here's your pubic bone, that hard part at the front of your pelvis. There's your bladder. So it's nestled way down in the pelvis. Uterus kind of sits nicely on top when everything's in the right place. And there's the bowel, the rectum. So bladder right here is what we're focusing on right now. And as it fills with urine, it, it, it has to grow. And as it fills, it lifts up a little bit out of the pelvis um, to allow room to fill, much like the uterus lifts way up out of deep in the pelvis as it grows a baby. So the bladder also lifts up and out as it fills and normal bladder capacity is 16 to 24 ounces of urine. And then your body tells you, oh my gosh, I need to pee as it fills. And if none of this is in trouble or not working right, you sit down the potty, you relax all the muscles down here. And that's both sphincters, you have an internal sphincter and an external sphincter. That's the little muscles that hold, hold the pee in when you don't want it to come out. They relax with you relaxing your pelvic muscles and all the pee empties out and ideally, all of the pee empties out, so you don't have to go again quickly thereafter. That is how normal bladder health should work. Anything to add, partner? <laughs> that was excellent, <laughs> incredibly thorough. So we just felt like a lot of women get confused as to how all of those things relate. So hopefully that helps give you greater context of normal bladder function. And sometimes things don't go well. Uh, our, that whole system and area of our body is under a lot of stress through pregnancy and childbirth. Things get stretched, pushed, moved, sometimes don't quite go back where they were originally. And that's where bladder dysfunction, pee problems come in. And there's different types. This is probably way more complicated than anyone has explained to you before. And we're not telling you that to overwhelm you, but to empower you with knowledge, because the more you understand, the better questions you can ask, the better you can advocate for yourself to get the care that you need, because not all bladder issues are created equal. And you can select the right tools to then help, because that is part of our mission, is not to just give you information about the problem, but also try to give you some tools for improving that problem, which we will talk about at the end of the video, so hang with us, let's talk about the two most common ones that most women are aware of, which is stress urinary incontinence and urgency urinary incontinence and some of the differences between them. That's, that's the most common things that we hear about with the women we work with. And that's because the stress urinary incontinence is really created due to an increase in abdominal uh, pressure, which again, if you look at this, that makes sense because as this is all trying to raise up, it, it decreases the space in the abdominal cavity. And if you have weak pelvic bowl muscles or pelvic floor muscles, this helps regulate abdominal, pel uh, abdominal pressure. So if you laugh, cough, sneeze, or jump, and you leak urine, you have stress incontinence because laughing, coughing, sneezing, and jumping increase pressure in this whole area of the body, the abdominal and pelvic cavity, which puts pressure on bladder. And if you don't have the support underneath here to hold it all in when the pressure up here increases, it's like, I love Jen talks about squeezing the toothpaste tube. And if 
it's almost like if your pelvic floor isn't working real well for you and you increase pressure up top, it's like squeezing the toothpaste tube without the cap on it's gotta come out. and it's going to come out. And that is stress urinary incontinence, that laugh, cough, sneeze, jump and pee situation. But there are three other types. <laughs> Surprisingly. And the, the urgency, you know, Typically, most women have both of those. I would say the urgency with the stress, the urgency feels like you didn't have to use the restroom. All of a sudden you feel like you really have to go and you have to get to the restroom quickly. Otherwise you're going to have um, an accident. And that's really just in involuntary contraction of the bladder, which causes the leakage. And that's due to more of the, the sphincters. And so that's the gotta go, gotta go, gotta go now and like can't get there fast enough. That yeah. is that type of incontinence, that type of leakage. There's also neurogenic bladder or neurogenic incontinence. So bladder is so complex, you guys. Needing to pee and peeing at the right time is all a complex process. The bladder has nerves that inter, um, help control it both from the conscious and the unconscious part of our nervous system. So the conscious part of our nervous system that innervates or helps control the bladder is the part that lets, because it's a conscious activity, hopefully it's a conscious activity to let the pee out. And that's the part that's controlled by those conscious nerves. There's also a subconscious part of our nervous system. That's, that's where the fight or flight system is. That's the, I was scared, I startled yeah. or scared so much I, I peed my in my pants. pants. And that's also why there's a big anxiety component wrapped into bladder health and bladder emptying and pee function because that fight or flight system plays a role in and with bladder function. So believe it or not, getting out of fight or flight is important for bladder health. I mean, it's fascinating if you're a little bit nerds like us, you want to know this information, but you should want to know because it's actually going to help you in the end. So neurogenic bladder is dysfunction of the, the nerves, the interface. nerves, exactly, which is a complex system. As we talked about, there's conscious nerves and there's subconscious nerves that all play a role in how this stuff works. And so one of the ways that you could help yourself, if you've been told that maybe you have overactive bladder, um, which is something else that this particular thing is caused, um, is called rather, you could utilize our 90, 90 decompression, which we talk a lot about for back and hip discomfort, but that 90, 90 also does a great job of decompressing your vagal nerve, which controls fight or flight. It regulates whether or not you're in that rest and digest or fight or flight. Yeah. You want to be more in that rest or digest. So putting, elevating your legs as we show in that 9090 above your heart is a vagal decompression and it's going to alleviate anxiety and that fight or flight system. So we'll Which drop that in the comments below. Which can actually help the neural piece of bladder dysfunction. So cool, right? Like knock out a whole lot of things all with one technique. Um, the so last, the, yeah, you have the, a personal experience <laughs> with this one. This is overflow incontinence, and this is really a blockage in the tube that you pee out of that causes this. So this is similar to the view we just showed in the textbook. This is from the side. The little red is bladder, yellow is uterus, green is rectum, and this is the pre-baby <laughs> situation. Yeah. And then, as you know, Jen is living with prolapse of all three compartments, which means, so here's where bladder ideally is, and you see this nice little tube here. This is where the pee is supposed to pass out of this red line. And what happens when there's prolapse specifically of the bladder or cystocele is the bladder's kind of fallen back and down. And where is that tube? Where is that nice little line that's straight and open and unencumbered? It's kind of not there. It's kinked, it's smushed, it's pulled on, it's crooked. And that is a blockage of the passage the pee needs to take to get out of the body. And that's what this last type of incontinence is about. And we have some tools in our program that help relieve that and that we've taught and that life, Jen uses. Life, life changing. It's a kink in the hose, as she calls it, is yes. what it feels like. And that's what it feels like. Like if you were to step on a garden hose, you know, you know that you have to go. There's pressure building there. And then you change your position, like what used to happen to me is I would just either lean over or change position and I would have leakage. 
and that's the overflow incontinence because that change in position would then alleviate some of that pressure and that kink in the hose and then whoop, you know, hello, there surprise. Goes. Because it was full <laughs> and it was ready to come out. And even if she could feel that, she wasn't able to empty because of that kink. I mean, you know what happens to a garden hose, get that twist, ain't nothing coming out. Um, so that's what all this stuff feels like. And it is complex. Um, and if, if you're dealing with some of these bladder issues, it leads to not being able to get all the pee out when you do need to pee, which can lead to much more severe issues the like chronic recurrent UTIs. chronic UTIs. And then those can even progress further up the chain of the urinary system up into bladder infections and kidney <laughs> infections. So this stuff can be a really big deal please seek help from a physician diagnosis if you're looking, if you're dealing with any of this stuff. And if, if you have that stress incontinence, our program will fix it with no Kegels and no sit-ups required. That is what we know for sure because the research proved it yep. on top of all the anecdotes and personal experience that we have behind that. Um, but we encourage you to seek care and seek help for this stuff because it can get into more progressed problems and it's not going to get any better as you get older. That's the other thing. If you think yeah, it's going to get isn't better, something that just goes away. I really wish it, it did. It's not. Denial is not a good thing. <laughs> it's not. So if you're having a little bit of leakage now, and you're like, maybe it'll get better. It's not bad enough that you really want to do anything about it. Just remember us and call us when it does get worse, because we'll still be here talking about pee and poo and pelvises, and we'll be ready to help. <laughs> Reach out with your questions, ladies. We are here. Our hearts are in this. We are personally invested in your results and want you to feel your best.